Hey, what's up guys? Matt Laidlaw here. Thanks for checking out my channel. The bulk of my content is here on YouTube, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future Harley Davidson content. Also check me out on Instagram. If you ever want to direct message me on Instagram, that's probably the best way to contact me. And if you're looking for a bike in Southern California, hit us up here at Laidlaw's Harley Davidson where we have absolutely no added dealer markup or any other dealer fees whatsoever. So first off, I want to thank Ivan for allowing me to take out his 2020 model year Lowrider S. This is actually the first Lowrider S we sold out of this dealership, so I've been sitting on this video for a while, so I apologize to Ivan for you know taking so long to get this out. But part of the reason why is because he had a stage three kit installed on this bike, and at the beginning of the 2020 model year, CARB, California Air Resource Board, hadn't certified this kit. So those of us that live in California have our kind of our hands tied until things get CARB approved. So he had to bring the bike back later and have the stage three kit installed at a later date when the CARB got certified or past. So let me take you guys through the bike and point out all the stuff and kind of show off some of the custom work that he did to the bike. And he basically did kind of a good combination of both genuine Harley Davidson parts and aftermarket parts on the bike. So you've got a mustache engine guard here. It's a genuine Harley Davidson part. Kind of has that dip at the very top where you can kind of rest your feet up there if you want. You've got the ratchet style intake. This is a Screaming Eagle part. So obviously genuine Harley. He also did the 117 cubic inch stage three build on here. Left the paint all factory. But a lot of you may ask, well, what, why not the 131? The 131 kit has not been released for the soft tails. I'm assuming they will in the future, maybe. We'll see, but this is the, the 117. So bars on here are Todd Cycle Strip Bar. They're an inch and a half diameter bars into 12 inch rise. So kind of a cool aggressive bar, not something you see a ton on the Lowrider S. A lot of guys just kind of go with the typical T-bar look. So this is kind of cool to see something different. Passenger seat on here is a genuine Harley Davidson passenger seat that's designed to match the rider seat. So very much a clean stock looking genuine Harley Davidson look on here. The backrest for the passenger is also genuine Harley Davidson quick detach passenger sissy bar on here. He's got full Olin suspension on this bike which is kind of one of the nicest things about this bike. So he's got drop in cartridges here for the front forks. The risers right there are a drag specialties. It's called the big buffalo riser but he's also got the the mono shock in the rear so the Olin's mono shock. This bike rides like a dream by the way which is nice when you're just hauling ass out on the freeway, which you'll see here in just a second. But just to have that that awesome shock absorption really makes it so you can just you know ride the bike with confidence at high speeds. So you can kind of see the tail end, that tail fender is, is bugged up a little bit. So the exhaust is relatively stock, you know, the header pipe's stock. He's just got Screaming Eagle mufflers on here, which the exhaust actually sounded really good. I was really impressed with the overall sound of the bike. Wheels, the finishes on the wheels are all, those are all just the factory bronze look that you know the Lowrider S is known for. The derby cover on the left-hand side there, he went with a wrinkle black derby cover. From the factory, it says 114. Obviously this is a 117, so we took that that off. He also went to forward controls. You can kind of see the hole in the outer primary there, but he went to forward controls. He's a little bit taller guy, so he wanted to stretch it out a little bit. This is a, a leather swing arm bag that's a genuine Harley Davidson bag that personally, I think it's a very underutilized bag. They're easy to put on. They're relatively inexpensive and they can hold, you know, your essentials like your glasses or gloves or, or whatever. You can't lock it, which kind of sucks, but it's a nice little day bag without the huge expense of like saddle bags. So for the foot controls, he used a Voltaic it's a genuine Harley Davidson foot and hand control collection, which was actually designed for the live wire. So it was kind of an interesting choice to see him put that on the low rider, but I think it really goes well with it. And it's something different that not everybody has. Spark plug wires are the red Screaming Eagle spark plug wires. That lay down license plate is a DK Customs out of Drag Specialties a lay down license plate. Here's a shot of that Voltaic foot control again. Kind of a, a modern look to it, which I think goes well with the low rider because the low rider S is kind of your classic overall silhouette. Of, of a Dyna or soft tail, but kind of has that modern image or attitude and, and look about it. So I think the Voltaic was cool. There's those spark plugs again. He's got a Ram phone mount up on that riser as well. Again, that riser is a drag specialty, big Buffalo riser. Just shot of the front of the bike. Obviously he's got the stock fairing on there. The levers there are edge cut levers. That's a genuine Harley Davidson part. The grips are grip it. That's also genuine Harley. And the mirrors are the profile mirrors, which are also a genuine Harley Davidson part. Here's a shot of that lay down license plate frame again. Again, that's DK Customs. That's a drag part, I believe. Paint, pretty much your stock paint. 
Again, he wanted the overall look and image of the stock bike with the wheels and everything. So we want to retain that Lowrider S overall look and appeal by adding some pretty key upgrades, namely the engine upgrade and that Olin suspension with a few peripheral accessories and stuff. So I think it turned out really nice, really tasteful build. <laughs> Back in August, sitting in Milwaukee at the convention center, just waiting to be led into the auditorium where they had all the 2020 model year bikes on display. And I was on my phone looking at HarleyDavidson.com, and that's where I saw for the first time that they were going to be releasing the 2020 model year Lowrider S. And it came as a big surprise to me. I think a lot of you know, my coworkers and other dealers around the world were also really surprised that they were coming out with it, not because it wasn't going to be popular. I think everyone knew it was going to be a popular bike, but just because there was no leaks or rumors or anything like that, at least that I heard. And so it just really caught me by surprise. Right when I saw it and, and I heard they were coming out with it, I knew it was going to really dominate sales at our dealership at least. And the Lowrider S has definitely been the, the most popular, best-selling Harley-Davidson we've had in probably over a decade. Uh, probably for the first half of this model year, they were all pre-sold. Like we never had one hit the floor. And then, you know, recently right now we have one on the floor. So so yeah, it's been an extremely good seller. It's what I think a large segment of Harley riders, especially the, the up and coming generation of Harley riders like millennials, it's a bike that they all want. Yeah, it's it's been really good to have the Lowrider S back and just to see all the different builds that people are kind of starting from the Lowrider S and building off of that platform has kind of been interesting. Everybody kind of has their own taste of what they want, obviously, and that's kind of the beauty of, of a Harley Davidson is you have so many options, so many aftermarket parts to use to kind of make get your own. So let's talk about this Lowrider S specifically. I had a ton of fun riding this thing. I appreciate the opportunity to, to take this bike out for a ride. How can you go wrong really with a Lowrider S with a Stage 3 kit on it? Just a ton of fun. So talk a little bit about the Stage 3. I know a lot of you have probably seen my videos in the past, but I'll just touch on this really quickly. So the Lowrider S comes from the factory with a 114. The Stage 3 or Stage 4 both go to bigger cylinders and pistons. The Stage 4 you get the heads and the fuel injectors and obviously there's a different cam for both of these in a tune. But the stage three is going to give you a power band that more mirrors what a stock Harley Davidson has as far as how to access the power and where that that kind of the peak torque is at the lower RPM range. Whereas a stage four kit takes that, that horsepower and it increases it, but puts that out further in the power bands and kind of utilizes that higher RPM a little bit more. So if you're someone that may be coming off of sport bikes, maybe you're a throttle jockey, maybe you like to rev it out and just kind of rev your bike up real high before you shift, then maybe a stage four is better for you. But if you're someone that likes that instantaneous, real accessible torque curve, then the stage three is going to give you more of that low down immediate torque that most Harley riders are used to. Me personally, I, I'm still kind of struggling with which, which one I would go with. I plan on doing something on my street glide in the future, but we'll see.
things when the Lowrider S first came out with is a, a lot of the, the haters and naysayers and whiners were basically saying that the Lowrider S should have come out with a 117 from the factory, which, okay, I get it. You know, back when the Lowrider Dyna was out, it had a 110, which was equivalent to the CVO. But me personally, I think that Harley made the right move by allowing and letting the CVO still have a larger displacement than the Lowrider S. I mean, that's something that I think they should always kind of reserve for the CVO guy. Um, another misconception that I get sometimes too is people think that a stock factory 117 is just as good as a 114 belt to a 117 and that could not be further from the truth the belt 117 produces significantly more horsepower and torque than the, the factory 117 that comes like for example on a CBO. I mean we're talking about you know 20 more horsepower and probably about 15 foot pounds of torque more right around there approximately. Yeah taking this thing out on the freeway was awesome you know a lot of you guys know that the freeways by our dealership are kind of tore up so to have the Olin suspension on there was awesome actually when I took the bike out I forgot that this bike had suspension and when I started riding it down the freeway I was like oh my gosh like what what does this thing have in it like the, the Olin suspension was awesome and you know when you're taking a bike out and you're you're ripping you start hitting bumps everything is a little bit more amplified when you're at high speeds and so you lose traction it, it disrupts kind of your flow out there but to have that suspension to keep you planted on the highway just really just allows you to handle the bike stay more focused on the road it just absorbs everything better and it's just you can just go faster as a result you know suspension although it has nothing to do with the engine it allows you to go faster both on the straights and also in the turns as well you know in the turns even more so but the bars were cool uh, i felt like they were just about shoulder height for me a little bit below shoulder height i caught a lot of wind on this bike you can kind of see my jacket there me personally i like to have a fairing up front i do a lot of freeway riding so you know fairing up front would be cool for me obviously this isn't my bike and, and ivan had a kind of a different direction to go in so kudos to him for you know doing things his way and, and kind of keeping with that the stock lowrider s style not everybody wants a big hunk of abs plastic up front and so you know keeping it minimalist was cool but yeah the, the combination of the engine and the suspension on this thing was awesome another kind of way if, if you don't want to spend you know big bucks and get the olins you know a lot of times i recommend to people getting the the heritage shock which very not a commonly known fact that the heritage and the fat bob have a little bit taller mono shock in them from the factory and because the lowrider s doesn't have the external knob adjuster on there you can get the heritage shock and put it on there and get a little bit more ride heights and i think that shock is like 450 dollars or something like that and you're going to get significantly better ride quality out of the rear end not olin's standards but you know pretty good otherwise the bike also has cruise control on it i haven't spent the money and did cruise on it you know when you're doing a bar job it's kind of nice to do that because you can overlap the labor a little bit obviously the forward controls were really nice for me at six foot six inches tall it was nice to be able to put my feet forward a little bit you know a lot of guys like the mid controls which i'm glad harley david and did the mid controls on the lowrider s the mid controls favor people that ride aggressively a little bit more your foot position and just kind of the leverage you have is a little bit more conducive to hard aggressive riding which the lowrider s kind of caters to obviously with the inverted front end and all the all the parts that the dual disc brakes and the bigger motor all the parts that come factory stock i think me personally if i was getting a lowrider s and i was looking at an engine build i'd probably go with the stage three um this bike is governed harley davidson governs their bikes at about 110 115 miles per hour i get asked that question a lot so yes this bike is governed the new frame that came out in 2018 the new softtail frame has really made both the softtails and what was once known as the dyna just a lot better all around motorcycles these bikes are a lot more freeway capable than like the old dyna chassis just ripping on them hard out on the freeway you know putting them through turns and everything just the stiffness in this chassis has really made these bikes just a great around town bike a bike that is you know quintessential harley davidson and in the look and the profile and everything but it's also really good in the straights out on the highway now the suspension that was installed on this bike makes it even more highway capable and even more comfortable out on the freeway but even with the stock stuff these bikes are way more comfortable than the old dynas and way more comfortable than the old soft tails so it's, it's kind of funny how the, the lines are getting blurred a little bit between this bike and the touring chassis just because of how capable these new soft tails are i will say that the touring chassis bikes still are better you know out on the highway 70 miles an hour plus you know for long duration you just more stability more smoothness in, in a lot of cases more wind protection and it's still a bike that i would want to travel on on the touring chassis that is than, than one of these bikes but if you're a guy that doesn't do a whole lot of the overnighters you know with you know hundreds and hundreds of miles in a day then it's hard to make an argument against the new soft tail chassis unless you're just really tall in stature and you maybe you're just a really big guy you know big dudes that are you know six feet plus that you know are 230 plus 
that just the proportions i think the rider to to bike proportions just look a lot better on the touring bike but you know if you're not a really big guy and you're kind of a day tripper type of a dude then just having the the favorable power to weight ratio of the soft tail and the versatility of a soft tail it's it's hard to beat i mean these bikes are just they're just a great platform and to get the inverted front end and dual disc brakes on this thing and you know the five gallon tank from the factory this is just a really good all-around bike before the lowrider s came out it's really the Fat Bob was kind of Harley Davidson's performance oriented bike. If you wanted to a bike that you could ride hard that had performance features on it, you had to go with the Fat Bob. I think the limiting feature for a lot of people there was the fuel tank at about three and a half gallons. And a lot of people kind of, you know, bit were bitter about that when I think for the most part people don't realize just how far you can go on that tank. I mean, you're still gonna get about 120, 130 miles to the tank on the Fat Bob. Uh, and I think the, the style kind of threw people off a little bit about the Fat Bob too. I really like the style. I think it's really modern and, and progressive with kind of that Mad Max look. For just kind of the purists that want that, you know, Dyna FXR look, the Lowrider S really has that style, which is just so popular right now. I mean, it's been popular for a long time, but I think Harley Davidson just recently in the last year or two are finally starting to kind of realize that, hey, they're, they were sitting on a gold mine. I don't think they realized when they killed the Dyna exactly what they were doing and, and how big of a culture was developed around the Dyna platform. And until it was too late and they probably lost, you know, a ton of sales but i think now that people are realizing hey the soft tail is actually a better bike than the dyna and harley's coming out with these styles and things from the factory that are kind of replicates and kind of still harness that old dyna look i think people are kind of you know coming around and, and realizing that hey i've got a better performing bike here it kind of has that image and style that so many people liked in the dyna before and kind of that culture can now kind of progress forward and you know people aren't losing their identity anymore <laughs> over the whole loss of the dyna but anyways guys yeah awesome bike uh thanks again Ivan for letting me take it out and if you guys have any questions as always feel free to leave them in the comments below uh, if you guys have any suggestions for videos also leave that in the comments below as well we're pretty flexible here and I'm always looking for new ideas and, and, and new videos do you guys want to see more reviews on bikes I feel like I do a lot of reviews and, and when the bikes don't really change from year to year I don't really replicate them of course new models that come out I always try to re review any of the new stuff I plan on doing the soft tail standard here in, in the near future but yeah let me know if you guys want to see any specific topics or specific specific bikes and things like that. Take care guys, see ya, bye bye.